Which restaurants at Disney's Hollywood Studios deserve the spotlight and which should be booed off stage? It's time to rank every Hollywood Studios restaurant here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. We're moving right along with our ranking series, and now it's time to study up on all the restaurants in the Disney park filled with movie, glitz, and glamour. As we look into each of the restaurants at Disney's Hollywood Studios, I'll not only be presenting an overall score out of 10 for each location, but I'll also be filling you in on who would enjoy each of these restaurants and who'd be better off trying someplace else. Two important things before we get started. Important thing number one, we've already done three videos in this ranking series, so if you want to check every single restaurant in Epcot, Disney's Animal Kingdom, and Magic Kingdom 2, feel free to check those ranking videos out as well. Important thing number two, if you'd like a complete PDF of everything I'll be covering in today's video, make sure to drop your email over at disneyfoodblog.com slash everydhs. That way, you'll not only get a PDF version of this video, including those pros and cons for all 26 restaurants we're talking about today, but you'll also be automatically signed up for the DFB newsletter, which is going to give you even more updates and news about the latest Disney dining deals and offerings and pretty much everything else. So ready to walk the red carpet and learn about the restaurant stars of Hollywood Studios? Then we're going to get started. Remember, we're doing these in alphabetical order and each one gets a ranking. Okay, here we go. 50s Primetime Cafe. Have you ever been to Disney World and thought, man, I wish my aunt and uncle were here to make sure I kept my elbows off the table and kind of yell at me for not eating my vegetables? Then boy, do I have a restaurant for you. 50s Primetime Cafe is a nostalgia-themed table service restaurant in Echo Lake that sits you down in the middle of a 1950s style house setting and serves you comfort food just like Ma used to make. But don't think you're going to have a nice quiet meal here. Your servers are going to treat you like family literally, which means sassy antics and sometimes ending up standing in the corner. So if you go to the restroom, you best bet they're going to double check and make sure you've washed your hands before you return to the table. By the way, here's a spoiler, know what color the soap is. And if you've practically licked your plate clean, you'll become an official member of the Clean Plate Club and get the sticker to prove it. A big part of this restaurant's charm is those cast member interactions, but if you'd rather not play along and prefer eating your fried chicken and mashed potatoes in peace, just let your server know and they'll go easy on you. This is a great place for those who love retro style settings and want to try some of the tastiest milkshakes around. By the way, try the peanut butter and jelly milkshake. But the food here is going to be very reminiscent of places you might find back home like Cracker Barrel, which might have officially sealed the deal for some of you out there. <laughs> also, don't forget to check out the attached tune-in lounge. If you'd rather grab a quick drink at the bar and skip out on the meal entirely, tune-in lounge can get you hooked up with a cocktail in a setting that feels like a snapshot of a living room straight out of 1950. 50s America. So pros for this one, best for those looking for comfort foods. Is it great comfort food? Well, it doesn't really compare with a place like Homecoming over in Disney Springs. Pretty mass produced stuff and it's going to give you sort of that moderate chain restaurant feel when it comes to food quality, but it's okay. And fried chicken's fried chicken, y'all. Also, another pro, fun servers that add a wacky twist to an already unique dining room setting and seriously, really, really good milkshakes. So cons, not great for those who want a quick meal because this is a restaurant that's going to take a chunk of time out of your park day. It is a table service sit down restaurant. Also, the food can be a little too familiar for more adventurous eaters. We're talking like pot roast, meatloaf, fried chicken, stuff like that. And it's not the place to go if you're looking for a peaceful, romantic meal. If you have kids, they are going to love that mom and dad are getting in trouble. Overall, though, I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. I really do like this restaurant. The food quality has kind of gone down in my estimation in the past couple of years, which is why I'm knocking it down a couple of pegs. But it is a highly imagineered restaurant, which I love because I don't feel like there are enough of those in Disney World anymore. Okay, number two on our list, ABC Commissary. Feels appropriate that the ABC Commissary Quick Service is located on Commissary Lane right? Easy to remember. This restaurant is themed as a production studio commissary. Okay, I've said that word commissary too many times. It's starting to sound weird now. So there's not a lot in terms of theming. It looks like a cafeteria. <laughs> and there's a bunch of posters for like ABC shows and stuff and, and a couple of like props and things like that. By the way, this is a fast food restaurant. It's quick service, counter service, whatever you want to call it. But it is not a table service. Someone's going to come over and take your order kind of thing. This is a fast food joint. Now, I used to not be a big fan of the menu options here because they were super basic theme park selections and they were not done very well. 
Couple that with kind of boring theming and it just doesn't seem like it's worth it to go and there's a lot of other decent places to eat at Hollywood Studios. But after their menu rehaul at the end of 2020, there are definitely some better choices now, like the pork carnitas tacos, the curry rice bowl with shrimp, and the watermelon margarita. Now, ABC Commissary is great for a quick meal with more unique fast food options that won't completely push you out of your comfort zone. That makes it a solid choice for groups with varying tastes and preferences. Seating here is going to be all indoors. There are a couple of little random tables outside, but most of the time you're going to want to go for that AC inside, and there's plenty of seating here as well. Okay, pros on this one. Best for those looking for more unique fast food options on a budget in Hollywood Studios. Mobile ordering is available here and good portions for what you pay for. Cons is not great for those looking for fun and immersive setting. It's just a cafeteria. And there are definitely still more unique options out there, especially when you head around the corner to uh, Galaxy's Edge. And if you actually preferred the kind of old boring menu, you're going to have to look elsewhere. Overall, I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10, which is kind of shocking for me because ABC Commissary has always been on the bottom of my list. So well done, ABC Commissary. Next up, we've got that little kiosk, Anaheim Produce. Hollywood Studios wouldn't be an official Disney theme park without one of those little side snack kiosks where you can get the healthy foods, right? Anaheim Produce is on Sunset Boulevard, and this serves as Hollywood Studios' option for those healthier snacks like fresh fruit. This is where you're going to get that. And they've also got some not so healthy, but still basic snacks. So many of these snacks can be found at your local grocery store, but some guests are stoked to find that this is one of the few locations in Disney World where you can purchase a pickle in a pouch. Trust me, there is a group out there who's fist pumping and jumping for joy that they get a theme park pickle. So pros, theme park pickles. Great for those who want a quick and familiar snack. There is some seating there, but it's all outdoors and it basically belongs to the other counter service restaurants in the area, but it's okay if you use it. And sometimes they have some pretty good margaritas here. Cons, these same snack options are a lot cheaper at your local grocery store. So if you can pick them up on your way in or order them through a grocery app, that's gonna be cheaper. And there's nothing super eye-catching here, except for the Mickey pretzels, which you can grab at lots of locations around the property. Overall, yeah, we love that there's a healthy food or fresh fruit location in Hollywood Studios, but there's really nothing else going on here. So I'm gonna give it a six out of 10. Number four on our list, Backlot Express. Now, for those of you who watched our Animal Kingdom ranking video, I feel about Backlot Express the same way I feel about Restaurantosaurus. It is very, very dear to my heart. I don't know why. I can't explain it. Maybe it's from when I went there as a kid. I don't know. But I love Backlot Express, and I go there all the time when I'm in Hollywood Studios. Not going to lie. So... This is basically a fast food, quick service restaurant that is themed after a production studio warehouse. Backlot Express is a counter service in Echo Lake, not too terribly far away from the Star Tours ride. It's kind of right next door. And the menu is pretty safe at Backlot Express. Can you tell I was a picky eater when I was a kid? Yeah. If you really are missing the chicken tenders that used to be at ABC Commissary, that's where Backlot's going to fill that chicken-shaped hole in your heart. They've also got a selection of burgers, sandwiches, salads. But our favorite performer on this menu is that delicious Wookiee cookie, which is two oatmeal cookies with vanilla cream filling. It's basically a giant, really, really good OCP, oatmeal cream pie. And it's got a milk chocolate sash on top that looks just like chewy. And that, of course, is the inspiration for the treat, Chewbacca himself. So though this restaurant isn't necessarily the most aesthetically pleasing, it is very, very cool. And if you don't think it's cool, then you're not looking. Take some time to walk around the restaurant, look at the props, the stunt dummies, the backdrop paintings. It's very cool. If you don't think it's cool, I don't know what, why are we friends? I don't understand. Okay. Anyway, Backlot Express, easily one of my favorite restaurants in Hollywood Studios but that could be completely biased because I've always loved it. Oh, by the way, something else they have here is that Glimmer and Shimmer Blondie, which is an awesome, giant, the size of your face blondie with some killer icing on top, like in a swirl. Oh, it's so, so good. I love it. Okay, you still have to get the Wookie Cookie, but getting that Glimmer and Shimmer Blondie is required as well if you're going during the 50th anniversary celebration. So seating around here, it's a giant restaurant. There is tons of seating. Most of it is covered, but there is a section of the restaurant that is undercover, but outside. And there is a section of the restaurant that is outside and not even undercover. So you've got some choices here. But remember, if you eat here during prime eating hours, like 12, 1, 
it's going to be packed 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 you will be shocked at how hard it is to find a table so heads up on that so pros for this one best for picky eaters has a lot of dining room seating and the wookie cookie and that glimmer and shimmer blondie favorites also disney chicken tenders which if you know you know okay cons not the best if you're kind of tired of typical theme park fare valid way better burgers in disney world for you to choose from and the other con is that it gets real busy. So overall, you know, I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10. Like, I understand that some people don't love it, but it is one of my favorite places and it always delivers. Just don't forget to mobile order, okay? Please mobile order because whenever I go there, I just see lines and lines and lines of people who did not mobile order. And then the mobile order sections are super easy to just float on up and just grab it. So definitely mobile order on this one. Okay, baseline tap house. I gotta admit, I kinda had harsh feelings toward Baseline Tap House, and I still kinda do. It first opened in 2017, and it replaced my beloved Writer's Stop. And although it's still not my favorite place in Disney, it's definitely grown on my team. My team loves it. I'm not gonna say I love it. I don't, and I'll explain why. But my team loves it, and so, that is definitely a point in its favor. So Baseline Tap House serves small bites and beers on Grand Avenue across the street from Muppet Vision 3D. If you're big on the beer scene, you'll be happy to know you can create your own flights here with whatever options Baseline has on tap that day. There's also indoor and outdoor seating, but indoor seating is extremely limited and it's basically just sort of at a bar. And outdoor seating is extremely limited as well. I have literally never been able to find a table here to sit down. And that's one of the reasons why I don't like it. So if you need a quick pick me up before heading into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, you can order a charcuterie board here, a very inexpensive one, but it's delicious. And the Bavarian pretzel with beer cheese fondue and spicy mustard on the side. Those are two of their sort of favorites at Baseline. Now, like I said, I have friends who absolutely adore Baseline Tap House. It is their one place they go in Hollywood Studios. And I'll admit, if you can get a seat, it's great. So pros for this one. Best for those looking for a selection of cold beers on tap. It's one of the better pub-like options in Disney World, and it's also one of the better soft pretzel options in Disney World because that beer cheese. Cons, it replaced Writer's Stop, and it feels like salt in a wound. And limited indoor seating, limited outdoor seating, sometimes absolutely no seating. And it's also not the most kid-friendly snack stop. There's really not a whole lot for your kiddos to eat here unless they like beer cheese. So overall, I'm gonna give this a 7.5 out of 10. I wish I loved it as much as my team loves it, but I've given you my reasoning, so there you go. Okay, Catalina Eddie's. Eh, that's how I feel about Catalina Eddie's. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we've always promised honesty here, so honesty is what you're gonna get. Catalina Eddie's is a quick service location on Sunset Boulevard. It's part of the Sunset Ranch Market, which a lot of you, if you follow these videos, you've heard me talk about Sunset Ranch Market, bless its heart. And Eddie's serves up those love them or hate them puffy pizzas, very familiar to Pizza Rizzo, Pizza Fari, etc. On occasion, Catalina Eddie's will also feature a seasonal eat or treat, and sometimes they're really good. But mostly this is just going to be another pizza stop with limited outdoor seating. So if you're planning your trip, I wouldn't suggest you plan this into your strategy for your Hollywood Studios day. Maybe go watch our blog, join our newsletter. So if something comes out on this menu that's super cool, we'll let you know about it. But most of the time, it's just, nah, you know, it's just kind of there. Everybody goes here because they don't know any better. That's <laughs> that's why people go to Catalina Eddie's is because it's one of the first counter service locations you come upon when you go to Hollywood Studios. It's right there on that street on the way to Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster. And so people go ride those two rides and then they're hungry and they end up here. And it makes me so sad that they do. Plus, the seating here is all outside. Some of it is covered, but if it's one of those really, really cold or really, really hot days in Disney World, it's gonna be stinky seating. And since there are so many other counter service and fast food places in Hollywood Studios that have better food and air conditioning, why would you even go to Sunset Ranch Market? I have never understood it. So please, this is why you watch these videos. Don't go here. Okay, pros, best for puffy pizza lovers and occasional seasonal treats are available. But honestly, if you love puffy pizza, just go to Pizza Rizzo because then you get AC, right? And it's in the same park. Cons, strict outdoor seating makes it hard to eat and dine here when the elements are working against you. And again, very mediocre offerings. Honestly, I give this guy three out of 10. It's just not worth it. And my apologies to everyone who likes it and everyone who works there because it's not easy to work at a place 
that just isn't bringing its A-game. So I love you cast members. Well done. It's not your fault. <laughs> All right, next on our list, Docking Bay 7, Food and Cargo. It's time to start exploring some truly unique eats to the Hollywood Studios scene. Docking Bay 7 quick service location is the place to eat at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So what's the cargo part of Docking Bay 7 food and cargo? Well, proprietor chef Strano Cookie Tugs runs this kitchen, and this kitchen just so happens to have a delivery shuttle docked right on top of its fine and upstanding establishment. Hooray for immersive theming. Throughout the restaurant, you're going to be sitting in actual cargo shipping containers as well, which is kind of cool. Now, remember, you're in space here, okay? You're on Batu, so don't go to this location expecting puffy pizzas like you'll find at Catalina Eddie's. Thank goodness, right? Docking Bay 7 is going to serve up regional delicacies like Batuan beef and crispy tapato stir fry, fried Andorian chicken tip yip, and the roasted Andorian chicken salad. This location has mixed opinions among the DFB team, though. While some of us enjoy the range of unique dishes that include both lighter and heartier options, lots of us also think Docking Bay is trying a little too hard and is too pricey for what you're getting. What I will say is that you definitely feel part of the Star Wars universe here, and the food is a lot more interesting compared to other theme park eats, but there's not a whole lot of options available for kiddos, and the options that are available might not look like what they're used to. So unless they get the fried chicken tip yip youngling meal, which is just crispy chicken with a side of mac and cheese but the crispy chicken is like a rectangle so it's kind of weird i'm not sure that they're gonna love what they get so pros on this one best for star wars fans who don't want to fight tooth and nail for a reservation at oga's cantina also there's really nothing to eat at oga's cantina we'll talk about that later it's a unique quick service option for sure we love that it's indoor seating mostly so you can get that ac but there's also a very very cool outdoor seating area that's got a super relaxing vibe. I don't know. I just love it out there. It's very, very nice. So if you have a nice day in Orlando, sit outside. And of course, there's the fun Batu backstory and theming. Cons for this one, not the greatest option for pickier eaters and not a huge selection of kid-friendly options. And it is one of the pricier quick service locations. Overall, going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Next on our list is Dockside Diner. I honestly forget about Dockside Diner, but I shouldn't. It's a ship-themed quick service location that's set on Echo Lake and offers two different salad rolls, the shrimp and the chipotle chicken, as well as the creamy smoked fish dip. And let's not forget about that cute seaside brownie. I like getting it just for that little crab garnish alone. If you're a fan of seafood and you're looking for a speedy bite to eat, don't forget about Dockside Diner like we always do. However, if seafood is a hard pass for you, you're not gonna find much else here, especially not for the kiddos. But I will give you a little caveat. This place has always been varied. You never really know what they're gonna do with Dockside Diner. And the menu can change on a whim. So keep an eye on Disney Food Blog. Keep an eye on our newsletter. We'll let you know when things update and when things change. It's been kind of the same for a little while. So I don't know. I kind of expect them to mix it up soon. So stay tuned. Now, seating here is all outdoors. It's all like picnic tables with umbrellas over them. And it really is just a walk up, like almost like a food truck feel, where except it's a food boat, if that makes sense. <laughs> All right, pros, best for seafood lovers looking to grab a quick bite. You really don't get a lot of fast food seafood in Disney World, so that's interesting. There's plenty of outdoor seating there and that cute crabby brownie. Cons, not great for those who aren't a big fan of seafood or have a shellfish allergy. Super limited kids menu and only outdoor seating. Overall, I'm going to give this one a 6.5 out of 10 right now, but that could change. Depends on if the menu changes. Okay, let's talk epic eats. It's funnel cake time. Echo Lake can satisfy your hankering for a good old funnel cake over at Epic Eats. Not only can you order traditional battered and powdered sugared funnel cakes the size of your head, but you can also get specialty versions of them too, like the funnel cake with cookies and cream and soft serve vanilla ice cream, or that super stunning 50th anniversary special glimmer and shimmer funnel cake. Basically the same thing as the cookies and cream one with added golden cookies and sprinkles. It's very pretty. All right, so that's Epic Eats. It's just a little kiosk. They just do funnel cakes. But if and when the dining plan comes back, these are usually a pretty good deal for your snack credit. All right, pros. You like funnel cakes at the fair? You're gonna like these. Cons. Funnel cake's only here, so don't be expecting any light sweet treats. And there's not any seating as far as I know. You may be able to find a random chair here or there. Overall, though, I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. Okay, next on our list is Fairfax Fair. So ABC Commissary isn't the only fast food location that's received a menu makeover recently. Fairfax Fair over on Sunset Boulevard, part of Sunset Ranch Market, poor thing, got a gourmet hot dog menu last year, and we're really vibing with it. Honestly, I'm going to say Fairfax Fair and Hollywood Scoops are the two 
outliers at Sunset Ranch Market. I'm kind of okay with those two. <laughs> Still though, all outdoor seating, I just can't abide by that. But anyway, hot dog flavors over at Fairfax Fair. This menu changes up a lot too. It's like barbecue sometimes and it's hot dogs now. I don't know. We'll see if it changes. We'll keep you updated. But hot dog flavors, California BLTA dog, the truffle bacon macaroni and cheese dog, and the pretzel dog. But if you're more of a traditional hot dog connoisseur, there's also an all beef quarter pound hot dog that you can choose as well. These hot dogs have really helped Fairfax Fair step up their game in the Hollywood Studios quick service scene, but it's pretty safe to say that if you're not a hot dog fan, you're going to want to look for lunch elsewhere. However, if you're not a hot dog fan, but you are a gooey toffee and toasted coconut blondie fan, which is a very specific category I know, then you can grab that 50th anniversary glimmer and shimmer blondie here too for under $5. But if you can get it over at Backlot Express, why wouldn't you? I don't, I just don't understand. Okay, pros on this one. Best for all the hot dog fans out there, at least right now. We'll see if the menu changes. And that glimmer and shimmer blondie, of course. Cons, not the best for people who don't like hot dogs, obviously. And very limited outdoor seating. All right, gonna give this guy a 7 out of 10 as well. Boy, we're kind of stuck on that 7 out of 10. Alrighty, next on our list is the Hollywood Brown Derby. Now, this is your true Hollywood star. The Hollywood Brown Derby is the park's signature restaurant, meaning it's fancy schmancy expensive restaurant located on Hollywood Boulevard. The classic dining experience is meant to be a replica of the famous Hollywood landmark restaurant, but dare I say the food here might be just as good as the OG location. Expect upscale dishes like the famous Cobb salad, the free range chicken a la king, and that grapefruit cake that's been a favorite of mine even after all these years. But most mostly just because there's cream cheese frosting on it. Reservations do help to dine here, but if you miss your window of opportunity, you can always try getting a walk-up seat at the Hollywood Brown Derby Lounge, which will not only give you full access to the restaurant's drink menu, but will also provide you with a menu of lounge entrees, which do include that famous Cobb salad. So there's so much to say about Brown Derby. There are a lot of hidden secrets, a lot of cool theming that you'd never see unless you were looking for it, but that's not what this video is about. So check out our other videos and our DFB guide to Walt Disney World Dining for all of that. Heading into the pros and cons, pros are best for those looking for a romantic signature restaurant to dine at, which will immerse you in those old Hollywood vibes. So if you're looking for a fancy schmancy restaurant in the middle of your park day, this is pretty much your only option in studios. And there's a consistent top-notch gourmet selection of food. It's really good. Is it my favorite signature meal in Disney World? No, probably not, but it might sort of rank top six or seven for me. And the lounge is a solid alternative if the reservations are filled. Lounge is first come, first serve. You don't need a reservation for the lounge. And the lounge, by the way, is all outdoor seating. Okay, cons, not great for those looking for a lighter meal before riding a whole bunch of thrill rides back to back. It is pricey, that's why it's called a signature restaurant. And walk-ups for the lounge can get crowded during the lunch and dinner rush. Overall, we're gonna give this one a nine out of 10. Okay, we're going to Hollywood Scoops next. So from super fancy restaurant to ice cream stand. If that Orlando sun is getting a little too hot, you might want to track down a nice cold afternoon treat. Hollywood Scoops on Sunset Boulevard is your hand scooped ice cream location in Hollywood Studios. You can get hand scooped ice cream in a cup or a cone and other options like the brownie sundae and the orange blossom shake. By the way, their shakes do change up seasonally. You never quite know what you're going to get there. And if you hit this location up during breakfast hours, you can also order a waffle platter featuring Mickey-shaped waffles that are actually blueberry waffles, which is this is the only place you can get blueberry Mickey waffles in Disney World. And they're served with fresh blueberries, whipped cream, and syrup. So pros on this one, hand-scooped ice cream. What's not to love? Sometimes you're done with soft serve and then that's when you come here. And it's great for groups looking for a variety of traditional and more unique sweet treats. Note that this one is a kiosk, a walk-up kiosk, so there's no real seating anywhere except that Sunset Ranch Market seating, which is all outdoors. Cons on this one, if you get one of these scoops in a cone while the sun is sweltering, you're gonna end up wearing your ice cream cone more than enjoying it, but I hope most of us know how to eat an ice cream cone without it melting all over us, right? Okay, and if you want a more savory snack, keep searching, because you're not gonna find it here, but you will find it next door at Fairfax Fair. Overall, gonna give this one a nine out of 10. If you're looking for ice cream, this is the place to be. Okay, Hollywood and Vine is next. Now we haven't talked about any character dining yet, unless you count 50's Primetime Cafe, because those servers are quite the characters in their own way. But Hollywood and Vine is the character restaurant at Hollywood Studios, much like Hollywood Brown Derby is the fancy restaurant of the park. 
So during the a la carte breakfast here, you'll be able to meet the Playhouse Disney crew, including characters like Fancy Nancy, Vampirina, Doc McStuffins, Roadster Goofy. These characters will change out every few years as the kind of Playhouse Disney shows change out. So if you have a kiddo who's into Playhouse Disney right now, just check the lineup and see, make sure that it's shows that they watch. And lunch and dinner here work a little bit differently. First up, you've got different characters. You've got the Fab Five characters, so Mickey and his buds and throughout the year Hollywood and Vine lunch and dinner are themed differently so you've got Minnie's seasonal dine so for example at the beginning of the year there was a tribute to the silver screen for lunch and dinner then you have Minnie's springtime dines that started on March 1st for the summer you'll be able to join the Fab Five at a beach party during summertime dine starting May 31st then there are the holiday parties that wrap up the year the Halloween dine and the holiday dine so these are the themes for lunch and dinner every single day they're not like individual individual days, but there's five different kind of themes throughout the year. For lunch and dinner, you and your group will be offered a prefix menu with entree options like macaroni and cheese with shrimp, carved herb roasted turkey breast, and spice rubbed pork loin. Now remember, this restaurant used to be a buffet and they may go back to buffet at some point. So stay tuned to the Disney Food Blog newsletter for that information. A lot of these restaurants are going back to buffet. So this is one of the better character meals in Disney, not just because of the rotating themes, but also because the quality of the food is usually pretty decent. But keep in mind that this experience will take up a good portion of your park day, so make sure to set your expectations ahead of time. And if you're not a huge fan of buffets, keep an eye on our newsletter, because I don't see why they wouldn't bring that back. So pros, this is best for those looking for character dining in Hollywood Studios, because, yep, yeah, this is your only option. And the unique rotating themes is kind of fun. It's a great way to meet a lot of characters in one setting with air conditioning. Yeah, so you kill two birds with one stone with this, you get food, and you get to meet all these characters that now you don't have to wait in line for. Okay, cons. Not great for those who'd rather spend more time riding rides and less time eating big, heavy meals. Also not great for those who aren't too keen on having to pay for more food than you may want to eat, because remember, this is a prefix meal for lunch and dinner. And that can sometimes be problematic if you don't want to eat that much food, if you have lighter eaters. And breakfast dining features Playhouse Disney characters that may not be as appealing to older kiddos. So if you go for breakfast and you have a couple of teenagers, they're not going to be interested in those characters. I guess I should say tweens. I don't think teenagers are interested in any characters sometimes. <laughs> okay, overall though, going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Moving on to Katsaka's Kettle. Every time I think of Katsaka's Kettle, I think of Molly from All Ears and her immense love for that super strange galactic popcorn mix that I really don't like. She and I have this conversation all the time. So Katsaka's Kettle in Galaxy's Edge is not your typical popcorn stand. There are two special popcorn snacks you can order here. The first is the buttered blue grains, which is basically your average buttered popcorn, but it, for some reason it's blue. It doesn't taste any different. And the second is that controversial Outpost popcorn mix, which is a colorful blend of sweet and spicy flavors. I'm just not a fan of it. Some people say that it tastes like fruity pebbles or some sort of fruit cereal. I just think it tastes weird. It's got chili powder. It's got some sort of a weird like grape flavor in it. I don't know. Molly loves it. I don't, but that just means more for her and I'm happy when she eats mine. So if you want to try traditional popcorn with fun Star Wars coloring, then the blue buttered grains is up for grabs. But if you want to grab an outpost popcorn mix and weigh in with your opinion on the sweet and spicy debate, then by all means, don't let me stop you. And definitely let us know in the comments what you think. So just a popcorn stand, no place to sit and eat or anything like that. And it's in the marketplace at Galaxy's Edge. Pros, traditional and unique popcorn in a fun Star Wars setting. Cons, the Outpost popcorn. But some of you might think that's a pro. So there you go. I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10. Okay, next is KRNR, the rock station. Before or after you get those backstage passes from your good friends over at Rock and Roller Coaster, you might need a small snack to calm your adrenaline. KRNR, the rock station, is a snack kiosk, kind of like a food truck, basically, right outside the indoor coaster that offers nachos, cookies, and select non-alcoholic and alcoholic beverages. Not much else to say about it. It serves its purpose, and every now and then it'll offer up something a little more substantial, but more than likely nachos and cookies and frozen drinks will be your go-to here. Pros, best for guests looking to quench their thirst after screaming their throats raw on Rock and Roller Coaster. Cons, nothing that really stands out here unless you're craving some substandard nachos. Overall, 5.5 out of 10. Moving on to Mama Melrose Ristorante Italiano. As the story goes, Mama Melrose originally moved from Italy to California 
to pursue her acting career. Her name was made to be in lights, y'all. But Mama Melrose quickly learned that it wasn't her acting people applauded, it was her cooking. So Mama Melrose's Ristorante Italiano was born. Now, this is a super weird backstory. <laughs> This is one of those restaurants I've never fully understood like where they got this backstory from because it's kind of like California, Hollywood meets Little Italy in New York City. It's very, very strange, but it's cozy. And honestly, I really do like this restaurant. But I think what you're going to see here is a lot of inconsistency. It can be inconsistent on the same dishes even. If I go and get a particular dish and then I go again in a couple of months and I get the same dish, I may have had a great experience the first time and a really not so great experience the second time. Service can be inconsistent here, but sometimes it is really, really great. And I do like this restaurant. It may be nostalgia, I don't know, but I do like this restaurant. They usually have a decent steak. They usually have some good pasta dishes. So if you love basic Italian cuisine, like flatbread, spaghetti, fried calamari, then this might wind up being a solid choice for you. I definitely think this is better than like a Tony's Town Square in Magic Kingdom. But that being said, there are definitely lots more Italian restaurants on Disney property for you to choose from too, especially over in Disney Springs. So lots of options. I probably would choose this one just because I've probably had more good meals here than not so good meals. And I also like that cozy, weird theming. I think it's fun. Pros, best for people looking for a sit down Italian meal in the park and cutesy dining room with a fun California and Italian <laughs> crossover decor. Simple and approachable food. This is going to be good for pretty much anybody, picky eaters and not so picky eaters alike. Cons, not great for those wanting something a little more adventurous. So if you're one of those people who's like, no, no, I want the bone marrow, this is probably not for you. And it's going to be heavy pasta dishes, a hot day in the park, multiple thrill rides. That could be a recipe for an upset tummy and potential of paying a hefty price for an okay meal. You just never really know what you're going to get with Mama Melrose. Overall, though, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 just because I really do like this restaurant and I have had, like I said, more good times than bad times. All right, the market is next. It's a little kiosk at Pixar Place and it might not have the most exciting name out there. It's literally called The Market. This is where you're going to find those rich, chocolatey, and dense Jack Jack's Num Num cookies, and that makes up for the lack of name creativity mostly. Aside from the cookie that I'm suddenly craving just talking about it, you can also order nachos here along with a variety of alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages. Sometimes a couple of other things pop up here like some breakfast sandwiches once in a while. Never really know what you're going to get. It's kind of a catch-all for people going in and out of Toy Story Land. So pros here, Jack Jack's Num Num cookie, definitely unique. It's made locally by a French bakery, it's pretty good. And cons, no outdoor seating and you gotta take your cookies to go. Overall, gonna give this one about a six out of 10. Next on our list is the milk stand. Remember how I said Katsaka's kettle was controversial? Yeah, it doesn't hold a candle to the arguments going on at the Milk Stand. Milk Stand is another quick service location found in Galaxy's Edge. And of course it serves that blue and green milk from Star Wars fame. Didn't see the green milk in Star Wars? Yeah, me either, but there we go. Don't let the whole milk thing throw you though. Neither of these drinks tastes like milk at all. Both are made of a plant-based blend of coconut and rice milk with the blue milk featuring more fruity flavors and the green milk featuring more tropical flavors. At least that's what Disney says. I think they both taste like perfume. Some of you love them both. For some, this is a must have drink when they come to Batu. For others, the milk tastes less fruity and tropical and more like either over sugary cereal or straight up department store perfume. So I guess it's ultimately up to you. If you wanna add a little more excitement to your taste test, you can always spike your blue and green milk with rum or tequila for an extra cost. Which team will you end up on? Team blue milk, team green, team alcoholic milk, or both? Or maybe you're on team, I wouldn't drink those again if you paid me. I don't know, let us know in the comments. So pros, it's the place to order those famous and infamous Star Wars milks. Cons, some hate them, some love them. Either way, they aren't really thirst quenchers and they're pretty expensive, so you'll need to wash them down with water. Overall, six out of 10. Heading over to the Neighborhood Bakery. Now this Pixar Place snack kiosk has a cuter name than just Market, but the bar is not being set too terribly high there. This is where Jack Jack's Num Num Cookie originally made its Disney World debut, but this location is temporarily closed and has been now for a long time. So thank goodness for Market for adopting the Num Num Cookie for the time being. Pros on this one, OG home of Jack Jack's Num Num Cookie and cons temporarily unavailable. And we don't know when it's gonna open up again. So overall, I guess I'll give it a five out of 10 because when it was open, it had some cool stuff, but kind of useless now, eh? All right, heading back into Galaxy's Edge to go to Oga's Cantina. 
Oga serves up a variety of intergalactic pre-mixed cocktails that provide an extra touch of novelty flair. If you order the popular fuzzy tauntaun, prepare to have your lips go numb. No, not from the cold. I mean, for real, your lips go numb because they use buzz buttons, which are Szechuan flowers, to make their tingling foam on top. If you want to know how to do that at home, we've got a full step-by-step recipe over on Disney Food Blog. We will link it here. It's pretty interesting. And if you order the Blue Bantha, which is one of the cantina's non-alcoholic options, you'll basically be served blue milk, but better blue milk than you can get over at the milk stand. For some reason, it's different blue milk. And it's got a Bantha-inspired vanilla butter sugar cookie which is pretty delicious. So why is this lounge so controversial? After all, it's got that immersive space bar atmosphere, it's got interesting drinks and even a DJ droid, so what's not to love? Well, the lounge has extremely limited seating and space. That makes reservations for this place very difficult to grab. And if you do get reservations, you'll be limited to a 45 minute visit to make room for more reservations holders. Now, the other problem with this is even if you do have a reservation, you might be slotted really like shoulder to shoulder between two other people at the bar. And there's no place to sit at the bar, by the way. There's a lot of stand up tables. There's very little seating in here. So even though you got up 60 days ahead of time, made that reservation, you may be just sort of shoved really tightly at a stand up table with a bunch of strangers. And that's your Oga's Cantina experience. I really don't dig that. I think it's super annoying, and it's why I don't like to go to Oga's Cantina at all. Just because if I'm going to pay this money and I'm going to fight this battle to get this reservation, I want to sit down and I want to enjoy myself, right? Anyway, something else to know about Oga's. All the drinks are pre-mixed. You cannot just order like a Jack and Coke or an Old Fashioned here. They don't have that. They don't have bottles of alcohol. They just have pre-mixed drinks. And all of them are kind of bright colors and very sugary. So it's kind of like being at a bachelorette party all the time here. That's sort of the vibe of the drinks. So just a heads up on that. Now they do have a small bites menu, but there's really not a lot on here. It's like three things. And the only substantial one is that Hapabor sampler, which is their version of a charcuterie board. But really it feels like someone just threw a bunch of weird crackers and like, grocery store cheese and meat that they found laying around onto a plate. It's not good, it's not well put together, and it's expensive. So if you're a big Star Wars fan and you wanna try everything in Batu to be a completionist, Oga's Cantina is still a fun and upbeat environment and the drinks will provide you with a good time. But if you're not a huge Star Wars fan and or you missed your reservation window for this place, don't stress about missing out on a life-changing experience here because you won't. So pros, best for Star Wars fans who wanna try it all, exciting intergalactic cocktails, and lively and vibrant energy. There's definitely a storyline going on at Oga's, but cons, it's one of the hardest reservations to get in Hollywood Studios and in Disney World, period, because it's so tiny. It's not best for those wanting a snack alongside their drink, very limited, strange, and pricey options available to eat, and it's very crowded. Again, most likely you're not gonna be sitting or standing by yourself. You're going to be with strangers and it's going to be tight in there. So overall, I give Oga's a 6.5 out of 10. Heading on to Pizza Rizzo. Oh, Pizza Rizzo, I'll keep it simple. Pizza Rizzo is the Muppets themed quick service on Grand Avenue, which replaced the Pizza Planet quick service restaurant that closed back in 2016. Nothing really changed when Pizza Rizzo took its place aside from Rizzo the Rat now being the head honcho around these here parts and of course a huge decor flip. But Pizza Rizzo's does have a leg up on places like Catalina Eddie's in Hollywood Studios, despite them both having those staple super puffy and overly greasy pizzas. For starters, the Muppets humor incorporated in the atmosphere is top tier. You can't tell me otherwise, it is excellently done. And there's also a ton of seating here, both inside and outside. Lots of air conditioning, lots of space to spread out. And if you're not in the mood for mediocre pizza, Pizza Rizzo does have a couple other things on their menu. They got a meatball sub and an antipasto salad. And Pizza Rizzo does get some fun seasonal offerings every now and then, like those Muppets Haunted Mansion themed eclairs that appeared on the menu this past Halloween. Those are super cute. And yeah, although we give Pizza Rizzo a hard time, it's not the worst spot for a bite, especially for picky eaters and hardcore Muppets fans. If you love the Muppets, you gotta go in here and check it out. It's super, super fun theming to really vibe with. But anyway, quick service restaurant, puffy pizza. Sometimes you get a cannoli or something. 
and air conditioning. So pros, it's great for picky eaters or kids who are always satisfied eating anything that even remotely resembles pizza. There's lots of seating and they've got that super quirky Muppets theming, which is lots of fun. Cons, mediocre options, not that great in general food wise, and not great for those looking for someplace quiet and fancy to eat, obviously. It's way better pizza options available on Disney property. So if pizza is what you're after, don't choose Pizza Rizzo. But overall, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10, pretty much just for theming and air conditioning. That's worth something. Next on our list is Ronto Roasters. If Fairfax Fair doesn't have an eclectic enough hot dog for you, then you can jump back into Galaxy's Edge for a Ronto Wrap. The classic Ronto Wrap is made with roasted pork, grilled pork sausage, that's right, pork on pork, peppercorn sauce, and a tangy slaw all wrapped up in a warm pita. There's also a breakfast Ronto Morning Wrap you can grab if you're hanging around Batu in the morning. That one doesn't have the slaw and it's got egg in there instead. And maybe you'd like to try the plant-based option, the Zuki wrap, it's made with grilled zucchini. It's a great alternative for those looking for less pork and more veggies, but fair warning, all that tahini sauce can be messy. If you want to eat somewhere in Batu quickly, this is a speedy meal or snack you might really vibe with. It borders that fine line between adventurous eating without being too adventurous and scaring away more choosy eaters. But when Galaxy's Edge is getting super busy, which nowadays is pretty much always, seating can be really hard to find, and what seating there is is all outdoors. Think of this more like a kiosk than a counter service location in terms of seating. So pros on this one, best for those who want the quickest food option in Batu that's still the most hearty food option. Obviously you can get that popcorn faster, but this is going to be an actual meal, and it's a more adventurous hot dog with a plant-based alternative. Cons here are potentially too adventurous for some, especially with such a limited menu, and seating is gonna be limited. Overall, I'm gonna give this an eight out of 10. Rosie's All-American Cafe is next. This is on Sunset Boulevard, right next to Catalina Eddie's, this is the other Sunset Ranch Market, one that I think you should probably skip. The building is unassuming, and upon first glance, its menu looks pretty straightforward. Burgers, chicken tenders, hot dogs. But Rosie's likes to throw more unique options in the mix to every once in a while. For instance, you've got that plant-based lobster roll with marinated hearts of palm in lieu of the lobster meat. Granted, this sandwich tastes more like a light salad than it does seafood, but it's still fresh and very different from your usual quick service meal. For a little while, Rosie's was also the home of the peanut butter crunch cupcake which was basically my precious butterfinger cupcake they used to have over at trolley car cafe but now it's back at trolley car so rosie's rotates different specialty items throughout the season it's worth stopping by but mostly it's going to be those hockey puck burgers all that outdoor seating out in the elements and if you just want a burger go get a burger in a place where you can sit in the ac to eat it right okay pros great for those with a variety of eaters looking to grab a quick meal before hitting up those sunset boulevard rides and there's rotating seasonal treats as well. Now I will say one positive thing about Sunset Ranch Market, if I have to say one positive thing about Sunset Ranch Market is that you've got a bunch of different places together. So you've got hot dogs, you've got puffy pizzas, you've got hamburgers. So if you have a bunch of kids or a bunch of people who are just really picky eaters and they like all different things, then this is a maybe good option. I don't wanna say, I don't wanna say guaranteed good option because you know, I know that the food isn't really awesome and you do have all that outdoor seating, but I guess it could cater to several different preferences when it comes to basic theme park food. So there's another pro for Sunset Ranch Market. Cons on Rosie's, it's not great for those looking for themed dining. Although the theme here is pretty cool. It is themed after Rosie the Riveter. So you've got a very cool kind of victory vegetable garden next to it. You've got some very interesting theming in and around the actual kiosk itself. It's worth looking at. It's 1940s World War II theming, which is very interesting to me anyway. But there's mostly basic items here and more adventurous items are gonna be found elsewhere. Overall, Rosie's gonna get 6.5 out of 10. Okay, we've made it to Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater. So picture this, you're back in the 1950s, it's Friday night, you're wanting to kick off the weekend, right? So you cruise on over to a drive-in movie theater with your best buds to watch the latest flick all while drinking some vanilla milkshakes and chomping on thick, greasy burgers. Sound great? Want to do that in Disney World? Indoors? In the AC? Then you can. Sci-Fi Dine-In is a themed restaurant on Commissary Lane that places you and your group in your very own car-shaped booth where you'll watch clips of cheesy sci-fi movies in very, very dim light. 
The menu here features a variety of diner-like options. They've got ribs, usually burgers. Sometimes there's a steak. Usually there's a pasta option. So it's pretty standard kind of moderately priced restaurant cuisine for Disney World. So there's going to be a chicken option. There's going to be a pasta option. There's going to be a plant-based option. There's going to be a beefy meat option, some sort of a burger or something like that, right? And there's some specialty alcoholic beverages and a bunch of milkshakes and stuff. So the food here is decent. It's diner food. It's not the most well done diner food. I've definitely had better kind of comfort food at other places in Disney World, but it's okay. And the theming is probably one of the coolest immersive imagineered restaurants in the park. So it's kind of a, you gotta see it at least once kind of thing. Keep in mind that the seating arrangement is literally like you're in a car. So you're not gonna be sitting face to face with anybody. You're gonna be sitting side by side with one person and then two other people will be in the back. Sometimes you've got six people in the car, so two, 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 and you may be seated with random strangers. So if there's only two of you, you may be in the back and two random strangers are in the front of the car. So you never really know what's gonna happen. This is not a place you wanna go and have like a conversation. Obviously other people are watching the films up on the screen. Treat it more like a dine-in movie kind of thing. (laughs) You know how they have those around where you can go to the movies and order food. Like it's gonna be more that vibe than an actual like restaurant vibe. Now, there are some tables that are set up for very large parties or for parties with a wheelchair that have actual tables within a front and a back of a car. So there you'll be seated across from people and there you can technically talk to people. There also are a couple of picnic tables in the back. Those are, again, if you have a wheelchair or if you have a high chair, things like that, you're gonna be seated at those tables. So pros, best for those looking for an epically themed dining experience with super retro vibes. It's a lot of fun. The movies that they show are kind of B-movies like, you know, Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, stuff like that. Kind of tongue-in-cheek, kind of kitschy and funny. Another pro here is that it's hearty portions with classic foods. Mostly everyone's going to find something here they can eat. And it's great for those who are looking for, you know, dinner and a show. There's a little bonus here. Cons, seating can make it difficult to talk to your group. Maybe bad for those who are uncomfortable with small spaces and if you don't want to sit with strangers you know be sure to take that into account it's not great for those looking for something different than the usual american fare it's pretty much what you're going to get again burgers ribs steaks and it takes a lot of time out of your park day to experience because it's a table service restaurant overall i'm going to give this one eight out of ten as well i feel like based on these rankings there's a lot of just sort of mediocre stuff going on in hollywood studios Okay, next on our list is Trolley Car Cafe. We're finally getting to the Starbucks portion of this list. Trolley Car Cafe on Hollywood Boulevard is the keeper of your Starbucks favorites. And usually I'd say, eh, it's Starbucks, grab your coffee elsewhere. But this is where my carrot cake cookie lives currently. So I love Trolley Car Cafe for that little sweet treat alone. So if you just so happen to be there for the carrot cake cookie, then I guess you can grab your coffee there too. Just be wary though, much like the other Starbucks locations in the other three Disney parks, this quick service spot gets very, very busy. Like we're talking hours long lines sometimes. You may be better off hitting up this location later in the afternoon rather than first thing in the morning when everyone's jonesing for their cup of joe. Again, I do not understand why people wait that long for coffee in the morning. Just get coffee on your way in or like get coffee someplace else. You're in a theme park. You paid $100 to be here. Go ride rides. Anyway, pros here, carrot cake cookie. There's also other unique pastries and treats that you're not going to find at other Starbucks locations in the parks. Probably Trolley Car Cafe has more unique items than any of the other Starbucks in the park. So this is definitely a place to go for pastries and unique stuff. And of course, it's great if you're looking for your Starbucks. Cons, Starbucks drinks mirror the ones you'll find back home, same old, same old. And it can get very, very busy, especially first thing in the morning. So I'm going to give this one a 9 out of 10 simply because they have one of my very, very favorite treats in the whole wide world. And that's that carrot cake cookie. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for that. But everything else is probably a 6 out of 10 as far as this place is concerned. Okay, Woody's Lunchbox is next. Of course, he is the rootinest, tootinest cowboy in the wild, wild west, Sheriff Woody. 
And Woody's Lunchbox is in Toy Story Land. Now, this is the sole place to eat at Toy Story Land for now until Roundup Rodeo Barbecue finally makes its debut later this year. And this is a kiosk. This is all outdoors. You've got some outdoor seating, not nearly enough. So if you go during a busy time, you are going to be wandering around with your tray for a while looking for some place to sit. And there's a lot of folks who end up sitting on the ground. So just heads up, this is a good one to hit when it's not a busy eating time. Now, you've got breakfast and lunch options here, both of which feature potato barrels, which are tater tots that are baked and not fried. And they're smothered in savory toppings. There are other savory options you can choose from. During lunch, like the grilled three cheese sandwich. It's really, really good. The smoked turkey sandwich. I have no idea. I can't even remember eating it. And the barbecue brisket melt, which is super, super yum. Though this section of the park is very kid friendly with a great variety of rides for kids and their families to choose from, there's a surprisingly limited amount of kids menu options here. In fact, there's usually only one, the grilled cheese. And if your kid's into grilled cheese, then great. It's a good grilled cheese sandwich. We've even found ourselves ordering it. But the main attraction at Woody's Lunchbox is the Lunchbox tarts, which are basically fancy pop tarts. You got a rotating menu of seasonal flavors on these and your basic three that are pretty much always on the menu, the chocolate hazelnut, the lemon blueberry, or the raspberry. So pros here at Woody's Lunchbox, good mix of sweet and savory options for both breakfast and lunch slash dinner and an affordable menu. Cons, not many options for kiddos and really the seating is awful. It's all outdoors. And with that Orlando sun, sometimes eating a hearty cheese sandwich when it's sweltering outside is not a good idea. Overall, I'm going to give Woody's a 7 out of 10. So did you find any options on this list that you thought were worthy of their own Hollywood star on the Walk of Fame? If you need a refresher on everything I talked about today, remember to drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash everydhs so we can email you the PDF of this entire list, as well as get you all signed up for our DFB newsletter, which you can unsubscribe from at any time, and it's completely free to get. Lots of information, lots of detail. It's totally free. There's lots of good information, and we send you all the latest details, deals, discounts, and updates right to your inbox. So thanks for listening, everyone. Don't forget to go watch all of our other ranking videos, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Animal Kingdom, all ready for you. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we'll see you real soon.